So, what have we got here? Retina Telly Zener 135 millimeter f4 from Schneider, and this is made to fit the Retina Reflex S or Retina 3S or Retina Reflex 3 or Retina Reflex 4 or Instamatic Reflex. This has got to come apart for servicing. It's in fairly good order. Diaphragm works nicely. Glass is clean or cleanish. There's a bit of dust in there. Focus possibly just a little bit stiff. So how do you take one of these apart? Well if you rack the focus to the closest focus position it exposes this tiny screw right here and that tiny screw has to be backed out. So we'll remove that in its entirety pop that to one side and taking this in one hand and the mount in the other you just twist and nothing happens oh there's another screw okay I thought it had one it looks like we've got two or three they obviously do their job I'm sure some of these lenses only have one. Right, now, no screws present. Twist. Ah! I still can't get it loose. No, that's just a problem with old man muscles. Nothing serious there. Another attempt and that, that unscrewed nicely. So, we've got our front lens capsule there. And that just screws into the mount. There's this ring, in fact there's a couple of rings here, let's place that one back in, that's a shim. And this ring here has a tab on it. That tab engages with a slot in here, which stops the front part of that lens rotating basically. And uh, this ring is held in place, or it's held locked in place with those three screws that we removed just before. So here's our lens mount. Now this is much more similar to the smaller lenses. It's basically the same sort of mechanism. So the rear group. Well that's just screwed into the back of that tube, it's not very big, and that should come off with a friction tool, and it should come off like this, I think. Let's see if I press on that, rotate it, that came loose. That's our, our entire optical components front and back now we've got this so here we've got the lens capsule if, if you like which is in this case is minus its lenses because we've removed them and that's held into the mount with three screws and washers very much the same arrangement as the f1.9 xenon lens Tip those out, put them to one side. The lens capsule should pop out, and it does. Here we've got the our lens helical. Now the grease, surprise, surprise, is dry and sticky. So this is very, very stiff. Doesn't exactly move smoothly. The mount itself here does move smoothly. All of these controls move smoothly. This does not require stripping down in this case. There's nothing for me to gain there. That's working nicely. So my problem with this lens, 
mechanically at least, is this grease on here and in here, which I'll need to clean away in a traditional fashion with naphtha and cotton buds. Now it's probably worth noting that with these types of lenses, the standard lenses, the 50mm lenses that will be fitted to the camera body all the time, or 99% of the time, most frequently need to be serviced and most frequently need to be completely stripped down and serviced. The other lenses, your 35, 85s, 135s, etc., are not on the camera quite as frequently, or at least not for most people. And they don't get a chance to gather up dirt and filth and grime in the same fashion. And so, very frequently, they do not need to be serviced. This particular lens, the focus is stiff. The cause is pretty obvious here because this focus helical, the grease was just dirty and dry and sticky. And if I clean all this away, I wouldn't be at all surprised if this works quite nicely with some fresh grease. Yeah, the grease just, it just doesn't age well. It just deteriorates over time. Some of that is, is just part and parcel of age. It's just, just a matter of the mat, pass, passing of time, if you like. And the rest of it might be down to other factors. Of course, where the threads have also gathered up dust and dirt, that will impact, it's in the, in the grease, it'll be impacted into the threads and it'll make things unusually stiff to move. Now looking at this, I can sort of see that there's stuff embedded in there. Yeah. And I'm poking that stuff free with a with a toothpick. Now that looks just like dust to me that's collected in there. Some of it could be fibers um, even from that Q tip that I was just using. But these threads are a little bit clogged up with dried grease. So I will attack them with a different solvent, I think. Got this CRC Heavy Duty Electra Clean. This is often more useful. where the grease has gone dry and hard and the, and the naphtha doesn't seem to make much impression on it. Well that part looks good and the other part cleaned up pretty good. They're probably different alloys. They don't have the same colour. That thread doesn't want to start there. Let's try running it on backwards. That's better. Right, I'm just going to run a bit of solvent in there and then work that backwards and forwards. which helps loosen up.
any fairly large deposits in the threads. Of course stuff that's really tucked down in the root of the thread probably doesn't touch anything and probably makes no difference at all to that. But then that's probably not going to cause us any problems anyway. Okay, that seems good. Yeah, once round with the swivel after again, see if that'll pick up any Yeah, you can see the more dirt came out of there. Now all that was worked loose. Just by working the two pieces together. And that would just be all impacted dust and dried grease and so forth. multi-start thread, very fine. You have to be somewhat cautious. Don't cross thread them when you're trying to start them. Be very, take your time. If it doesn't want to go, you know, try something else. I'm just working that thread with a bit of naphtha in there. Remember these surfaces are quite old too, this lens is quite old, that brass, um, it will have oxidised. I mean, so you end up with tarnish on there, which won't be as shiny and slippery and low in friction as the brass once was. In cases where you really can't get the the threads to move smoothly over each other. You can use metal polish in there as a uh, as a grinding compound for practical purposes. And you apply a little bit of it to the thread with a paintbrush, and you work it backwards and forwards. And then you dismantle it. You flush it away with naphtha and you apply a bit more. This is nice and smooth now. That just moves beautifully. That's, that's, just, as, that's just great. There's no problem there at all now. And that's where our problem was originally. It was in that grease. So that little job is virtually done. I'll just clean in here. The lens comes right down in there so there's not much happening on those surfaces. Just making sure I've got rid of any dust or rubbish that might be present. The diaphragm moves smoothly. I'm making sure that moves smoothly. Resist the temptation to pull this all the way open and then take your finger away and let it snap back. You'll end up damaging the blades doing that. There are five positions there, I think. There are five positions, but there are actually ten blades. Um, it's quite a complex little setup, and it's no fun to put back together. Okay, so, since I'm pretty happy with the state of this, I think I'm not going to strip this down. I'll just give this mount a wipe. Now there's some oil residue there, or grease residue. But there's not much, and this all moves nicely. So we've got to get this in, into the mount. Now we face the same problem as we did with the 50mm f1.9 um, Xenon. We're trying to line up the tab for the aperture opening and the notch here that holds the lens from rotating in the mount. Both of those I'd want to lubricate with a touch of molybdenum paste so that they there's no undue friction at that point.
but I'll use the same trick. I'll put a cotton bud through here to hold that open slightly while I slide the cartridge together. Okay, so now I just have to lower this into there basically, or lower this over, over that. What if we put that on something like that? Makes a handy stand, and now I can see the relative position of my diaphragm attack notch there and the lens guide there and if I line those two up I should be in business at least that's the theory so let me see where everything is this round dot here that's on the end of that post the guide post so if I can line up my aperture setting work out where I'm going with the other I should be in business no it's not happening for me Let's make life a bit more simple. Let me put a mark on the top rim here where the guide post has to go. I can see that from the outside easily. And the aperture connection is, let's get that at there. About there. That's it. That's in place. Okay. So I flip that over and put it on something so that the lens is not pushed out of the lens body. Take my helical grease, put some on the helical, and I just want to touch in about half a dozen places around here. You do not need to absolutely clog the threads with grease. That's counterproductive. You can end up with the mechanism being very stiff. Alright, so I'll pop that in there. I should be able to start that. No, I can. That just ran on very easily. And that's my lens in the, or the lens capsule back in the mount. I'll check that's back at the infinity position of my focus. And my screws and washers that hold this in place. I can now put in place. And we need to, uh, what I need to do next, once I've got this in place, is put my rear lens component in position and 
just make sure that's snug. Then I can screw the front component in, not locking it in, just screwing it back home and check the focus, check the focus adjustment. Then I have to unscrew the front group to make my adjustments and check it again. So it's a bit, a bit of a tedious backwards and forwards arrangement but it doesn't take very long and then you can get once you're happy with your adjustment you can screw the lens back in firmly put the locking screws back in place and all will be good you're done that's the theory do those screws up Check that moves through its range of motion. It doesn't want to come that far forward, so I've probably got it too far forward. Let me make sure back that in a bit more. Let's try it there. See if that'll move through its whole range goes to infinity it doesn't want to come that far forward it's just stacking those screws off move the lens back a bit that's just about it that's that's just about it now I think It moves up right from one end to the other and hits the stops at both ends, which is what we want it to do. That's a good place to start. It's moving full it through its full range. The rear lens group. I'll clean this with a bit of glass cleaner and pop it in place. It's only really the inside surface I'm most concerned with at this stage because the outside surface almost inevitably I'll be giving that another last final wipe before anything happens anyway but the inside surface once it's clean I don't want to have to revisit it and the outside surface is covered in condensation from my fingers there I see just wiping the outside edge, the edge of that mount it's a bit grimy looking I'll screw that lens into the mount now our black ring has to drop into that notch Right, I'm going to put that on the camera and see how I get on. Right, I've had a quick look and it doesn't go back far enough. So the lens needs to go further back in the mount. So I'm just going to shift my focus mount here to achieve exactly that. And I'll check it again. Eventually, I'll get it right.
That adjustment process went very well. So now I'm only left with the other thing I wanted to deal with, which was the included dust in this lens. I don't know whether to, it's better to do that with the lens intact and just remove the front groups. Quite possibly. So I'll put this back together and then remove the front group. It's just hard to hold that. And it's easy to hold it when it's mounted on the, uh, the whole lens structure. Just blow that, make sure there's no dust. Put that little shim in place. That glass is clean. Do up the lens, one final test. That's good. Right, so I'll run that out to the close focus position. Put my three lock screws in place. You make a note that there are three of them. So if things don't come unscrewed when you've un only removed one screw, you'll know, like me, that there's a problem. This does not want to line up. Now we're away. So you're probably wondering how dust gets into lenses. Well, it wouldn't be easy. But what could happen is it could be that the paint coatings or the lacquer used to lock things in place in the lens has decayed over time and it's gone powdery and some of that has fallen off and is now visible on the glass surfaces. That would be my pick. it's not as though they're open to the atmosphere with lots of air puffing in and out. Alright, there's our third screw. Okay. So the name ring needs to come out from here. And I'll need a lens spanner to get that out. So here I've got a lens spanner. I've got that engaged with the notches on that name ring. I'm very carefully loosening that. Sometimes with things like that, you're better to hold the spanner still and turn the lens. You sometimes have better control doing it that way. I'm just using a toothpick here to spin this ring loose. And I do that because the wooden toothpick's not likely to scratch anything when I slip. Don't use the tip of a screwdriver. Don't use your tweezers. You will slip, you will mark something, and you'll wish you hadn't. Okay. So I can see there's a piece of glass there at the front and I want to lift that off nicely and uh, if I had a, a decent suction tool that would be just the job but I don't. 
I'll pop that to one side. I'm looking at this other piece of glass in here. What have we got? We've got a, a spacer and then there's another piece of glass. And it's that one there that's got our dust in it. So there's nothing tricky about these. They are convex on the front. The internal service is slightly concave. And this glass should be much the same. I'll tip that out into a soft cotton cloth. We can blow that out. Let's have a look at this. This is a cemented pair. There's some dust on the inner surface here. I'm holding that to the light. I've got reflected light coming in from beside me. I'm judging how clean that is. That looks very clean to me. That uh, dust that was present was loose. This looks very good. Now I want to clean that glass surface, pop this spacer back in, clean the front group, pop the front group back in, put the name ring in place. So I want a clean cotton cloth. Now what I use are well laundered, laundered handkerchiefs. The type that don't hurt your nose when you've got a cold. Ones that are really washed to death. So that they're all just soft fibres. I'm just using a bit of glass cleaner here. And a fresh piece of the cotton cloth. Which will inevitably leave dust behind. But that should blow away. And I can check this against the window light to see how well I've done. So a little bit of something on there. Let me have a go at that. See what it is. Yeah, just a bit of dust on the surface. Of course, this is an internal surface I'm busy cleaning. And internal surfaces, by their nature, you can't get to them. So you get one chance to clean them before you close it up. And after that, if you have second thoughts, you're going to have to open the lens up again to get to it. That looks good to me. The spacer that was in there. I'm going to wipe that with a bit of naphtha. Just to remove anything loose that's on it. This has got some matte black finish to it. And it's possible that that matte black finish was what was coming loose. The cause of our dust problem. Oh, I think though the dust was further back, wouldn't it? That can't be that. Okay, so that space is in position. I'll check that lens again. It's looking very, very good. Which only leaves me my front group, my front element to clean and put back in place and then put the name ring on. So I'll work on that. Well, that's it. There's our dust free, nice and clean, retina telly zenar, all good. 
and this camera and its two lenses can go back to its owner. Thanks for watching.